everybody give Isaac a big hand clap. Yeah. Right. And my notes up here, they look suspiciously like a piece of trash. <laughs> so, so these are my notes. Don't, don't throw them away. Okay. Anyway, well, let, let, me, let me get everybody's attention here. Now, I, I, do, I do talk to kids uh, every week back there. So if I can talk to kids, I can, I can get y'all's attention, believe me. <laughs> so let me, do, let me do what I do with the kids, okay? Let me do what I do with the kids. What I do with the kids every week is when they're not listening, I say, everybody say, shh. And I tell them, everybody sit up straight. And everybody sits up straight. And then that pretty much does it. And sometimes, sometimes I have to say, uh, put away your phones and stuff like that, you know. The, uh, sometimes they bring their phone, they start to play a game or something, tell them, put it in your pocket, you know, don't do that. Okay, so. Anyway, thank you. Thank you all for having me. Thank you, Pastor Ray. He's, he's back there, but thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Um, you know, in, in, the last, uh, in the last several years, I've been through probably the most uh, loss in my life, a period of real loss. How many of y'all have ever read the story of Job? Y'all ever read the story of Job? Heard about the story of Job? If you've heard about the story of Job, raise your hand. <laughs> okay. Now the story of Job, he, he went through the most loss of anybody in the Bible probably. Okay, and so Job learned something about God. Job learned uh, the thing that I learned, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of put those two stories together, my story, my testimony, and Job's. What Job learned was, was that God is the only one you can count on uh, all the time. You know, we can have friends we can count on, but not all the time. God is the only one. The Bible says that he will never leave or forsake you. I noticed that it doesn't say that he will never leave or forsake you. Uh, and there's other people that will never leave or forsake you. Or, you know, it doesn't say your family will never leave or forsake you. It doesn't say your friends will never leave or forsake you. It says he will never leave or forsake you. Now, there, there's no, it doesn't say that about anybody else. Okay, so that means he is the only one that you can count on all the time. So that's the number one thing that Job learned. That's the number one thing that I learned through my through my testimony, through what happened to me in the last several years. Uh, in 2009, uh, I had the first of many things that happened to me. Uh, I was on vacation, you know, visiting uh, my sister in San Marcos, my sister Jennifer, and her her four kids and her husband. Her four kids are insane, <laughs> but I fit in. I fit in really well with them, and so we, we get together. We'd be insane together, and uh, <laughs> but anyway, so we always have a good time joking and, and playing around, being being insane. But uh, anyway, so so we're we're having a good time, and then I get a, a call from my dad, and he and my dad keeps pretty busy. He's pretty active, you know. He doesn't just like to sit around. Okay, so so my dad says. Uh, you know, uh, I was doing some, uh, some, you know, work in the yard and in the backyard, and, uh, you know, I, I fell off of a ladder. And, and he says, I, I began to think about my, my schoolwork. You know, my dad's a second grade teacher, and he says, I began to think about my schoolwork, and, uh, you know, and I forgot that I was standing on a ladder. <laughs> and he said, so I just started to, to walk away, and I forgot I was on a ladder. And so he just... Psh, you know, fell on the, you know, on the, uh, the ground there, and he says, I don't, I don't remember if, if I, you know, if I, uh, you know, hit my, I don't remember if I, if I blacked out or, or what happened there. He said, I don't, I don't remember what happened to me, you know, and, and, and he was talking kind of slow, kind of hesitant, and kind of, you know, he sounded kind of confused, and, 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 and I says, well, what, you know, I'm, I'm out of town, you know, I'm in San Marcos with my sister, and, and he says, well. Gosh, you know, what, what should I do? What do you think I should do? And he's, he sounds really slow. He doesn't talk slow, so I knew something was wrong. Okay? And, and I go, well, why, why don't you have somebody, uh, you know, give you a ride to the emergency room? So, so he went to the emergency room, and uh, they discovered that he had a, a concussion, a, a bruise on the brain, which takes months to heal. So then I had to, you know, cut the vacation short and come home and, and help him. He couldn't, he couldn't drive for a while, and he couldn't do a lot of the things that he, he did before. And, and so, you know, I had to help him with a lot of those things. And then, then you know, that was for several months. And then we, we, we you know, we're getting over that. And, you know, we're, we're pushing on through. We have faith and all that stuff. And then in 2010, 
uh, you know, we're, we're getting over that. You know, that's that's a little bit past. And I, I was uh, I was sitting doing work at the computer. And I, I start getting this shooting pain in my back. Like, not just shooting, but it's like stabbing. It feels like a knife cutting, and not, not only stabbing me, but it feels like it feels like it's twisting, like somebody is twisting a knife over and over in my back. And I'm going, you know, and I'm just like, I can't get comfortable. I, I, I can't lay down and feel better. I mean, I can't stand up and feel better. I can't do anything to feel better. It just feels like somebody's doing this in, in my back, just, just continuously, and I'm going... God, I repent. <laughs> whatever, whatever I did, if I don't, you know, if I've done anything, please, you know, forgive me. You know, whatever I'm trying to think, man, what, what's what's happening here? You know, and this is the most pain I've ever been in. Just suddenly, just just I'm just sitting at the computer, and this happens to me. Okay, and so so eventually, you know, they you know they figured out what it was, and without giving you any gruesome details. It was called, uh, uh, what they discovered that I had was called a uh, prostate infection. Now, that, that is not uh, prostate trouble, you know, like older people have. That's, that's like a sinus infection, you know, where, where, where uh, some germs get in your sinuses and, uh, you know, and then you have a sinus infection, so some germs got in my prostate, don't ask me how, and, <laughs> and so, and uh, gave me a prostate infection. So, so like I say, being as diplomatic as I can and not giving you any gruesome details, uh, I couldn't go to the bathroom for two weeks. <laughs> and so, not a whole lot of eating during this time, but because there's nowhere for it to go. And so, you're, you know, it, that was that was tough. I thought this was a really big trial. I thought this was really tough. But but little did I know there was more to come. Okay. And so, you know, so then I'm getting over that. I'm getting over that. And, uh, kind, you know, kind of like Job, he has one thing, he says, praise God, you know, this is fine. Uh, you know, he, he was sad, but he was trying to have a good attitude and all that. And then things just kept happening, you know. Okay, and so in 2011, the next year, you now I'm getting over my health stuff. And I actually lose about 50 pounds uh, over a period of time. I lost 50 pounds. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm feeling good, you know. Man, I look younger, you know, and I can move around and I, I don't get winded with every step or you know <laughs> or whatever and so and i'm thinking man I'm, I'm feeling good you know god's god's gonna bring me out of this and it's gonna be great okay and then 2011 uh you know my grandma had been dealing with some health problems health issues and stuff and and uh and you know she was getting she was getting better she was in, in a nursing home but she was she was getting better and and then, then but she was you know she was kind of weak and stuff and and so, so we got a call saying that she had, she had passed away that year. That was last year. And, and that was kind of a surprise because she was doing a little better and, and making improvements. And we go, oh, man. Because I was, I was really close. I was really close to my, to my grandma. She, was, she treated me very, very well. So that, that, was, that was hard. So around this time, I'm, 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 I'm feeling this pain like in, in, in my body. I'm feeling this pain around here. I can feel pain here and here and here. And, my stomach is, is uh, kind of queasy, and I, you know I feel bad, and, and I'm thinking, what is happening here? I, I don't I don't know I don't know what the deal is, and so I get all these tests, all these tests done. I get uh, like a blood test done. I get uh, I, I I even I even go to the hospital and get an ultrasound. I guess they thought I was pregnant, <laughs> but they they did. They 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 gave me an ultrasound and did all that stuff and. And we're looking at all my organs over around this area here, and, 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 and they couldn't discover what was wrong. And, and, and with each, you know, doctor visit, I'm getting more tired, I'm getting, you know, lack of energy and all that. I'm getting tired of going to the doctor, and they can't, they can't discover what is wrong, okay? And so, so here's what happened. They discovered that I had a, a, a fatty liver, okay? A fatty liver is, is something that, you know, your liver kind of filters out everything. I'm going to try this once again. Everybody say, all right? Now, a fatty liver is something that, that filters out everything. It kind of kind of filters out your, you know, your toxins in your body and stuff. And so when you have a fatty liver, your liver is not functioning properly, so you get really tired because your liver is not functioning out all those things that it needs to, not filtering out all those things that it needs to. And so ar around this time, I'm getting very, very sick. I, sp I spent about six months... Uh, in bed, I spent about six months uh, just just sick and 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 not not really doing very much, not having very much energy. 
Somebody told me that they, they had a vision of me, uh, uh, a bulldozer trying to crush me, and an angel pushing it out of the way. I could literally feel when I was sick a big thumb coming down. Like, like, like I was like a little bug. I was like a little ant. I could feel like the devil. Like the devil trying to not make me sad, not make me depressed, not, not make me sick, but actually crush me and kill me. Okay? I could feel this big thumb coming down and trying to crush me. But the good news was an angel was moving it out of the way. Uh, now, here, here, here's what happened is, is uh, you know, I was, I was very, very sick. You know, uh, couldn't do much. And so then, then I realized that when I got sick and I was slowing down, not doing as much work, that people were, uh, people were not coming around because they were too busy. They were, not, they were not coming around to visit or send me a card. Oh, you know, hope you get better. Or, or, you know, nobody talked to me at all about being sick. You know, no, no communication whatsoever. And it was because, not because they were mean people and they hated me, but because they were too busy. And I realized, I realized that the body of Christ is too busy. The body of Christ is doing too many things in their own strength. They're, they're, the body of Christ is not... Mostly, some, some of us are, like this church is a family, but the body of Christ mostly is not a family. And that's a serious problem because we're brothers and sisters. We're brothers and sisters. We're not just, we're not just co-workers. You know, we're brothers and sisters. And so, okay, so 1 John 3.16, here's what it says. Not John 3.16, 1 John 3.16. It says, this is, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. And so it's very, very clear that, that God doesn't just want us to, to, to go to church and go, How you doing? Good. All right. See you later. Hey, we love you, brother. You know, thank you. You know, all that kind of stuff. God, God just doesn't want us to do that and go, and go hey, look, because I patted somebody for a few seconds, that I have a relationship with them. <laughs> Okay, now that's nice. That's nice. And, and I, I believe in saying hi. In, in high school, you know what I did? I would, I would shake hands with every single person <laughs> in the hallway. So I find it very valuable to say hi, shake hands, and all that. But it doesn't stop there. That is not a relationship. <laughs> that, when, you, when you say hi to somebody, that is not a relationship. When you have a conversation, when you lay down your life, when you spend time with other people consistently, not just once a week or a few seconds once a week. That is what laying down your life is when you help people consistently. That's what the body of Christ needs to do. I guarantee you, more people will come to church if the body of Christ will become a family. I guarantee you, more people will see not just us talking about love, but actually loving each other. See, see, we talk about love. Oh, I love you. See, that's what politicians do. Nobody trusts politicians. <laughs> they say, we love you. Oh, okay, but then they don't have time to spend with you because they're too busy. We need to be different from politicians. <laughs> we need to be different from the rest of the world. We need to be a true family, all right? We need to be a true family. Now, one more thing, and I'm going to close because I want to be asked back. <laughs> all right? Now, we did, we, this, this turned out so well last week uh, in Children's Church that uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it here. Let, let, me, let me go ahead and get a, a kid to volunteer, all right? This is, this is what I do in Children's Church. A lot of times I get a kid to volunteer, okay, to help me out. Let's see. Oh, you want to help me? I don't even know you, but, but I like the uncertainty of it all. Okay. <laughs> That's part of uh, Children's Church is things are unpredictable. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Now... Uh, let me, let me take your drink here. <laughs> I'll give it back though. Okay, now what is your name? CJ. CJ? Is that right? Okay. Yeah, because so, sometimes they say they say the name and I repeat it and it's it's wrong, so I just want to make sure. Okay. Now Jesus said, Pastor Ray even mentioned this uh, a little while back, uh, earlier today. He said uh, he said Jesus said if any person is supposed to is is going to come after me, then he has to. Turn, here it says, Luke 9.23. Then he said to the crowd, Jesus, then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross daily, not just once a week, <laughs> daily, and follow me. Now, when I was telling the kids what this meant, 
was is that the Christian life is not a selfish life. It is, I told the kids, God is not looking in the mirror going, man, I look good, okay? God is not thinking of himself. God is not selfish. So if we follow God, then we are not selfish because we have God in us because we are following God, okay? Now, if we follow God, then we're going to become more and more like him. Okay? That's not being saved by works. Some people have told me that. That's being saved by works. No. It's called following Jesus. Jesus said, follow me. He didn't say, go apart from me and, and earn your salvation. He said, follow me. See, that's what the Christian life's about. Okay? Now, I, I didn't say I was in children's church, but y'all can handle all this. Anyway. <laughs> all right? So, okay. So, CJ. Let's pretend that CJ, all of us, all of us, you know, we have problems. We have, we have issues and things, burdens. We're carrying burdens. Okay? Now, CJ, let's pretend he has this big burden, okay? Now, act like you're carrying something. Act like you're carrying a big load, like it's weighing you down. Act like it's hard. Can I make a, make a face? Make a, make a, well, like it's, it's a strain, you know? Yeah, there you go. Okay, and act like you're carrying a big bag, like a big trash bag. Kind of, kind of, yeah, like you're, you're carrying it. Okay, now, it's, it's very hard, very weighty, okay? Now, <laughs> now, we all have issues that are weighing us down. We all have things that we deal with in life, right? Okay, none of us are, are perfect or, or live in a, a, you know, we don't live in heaven yet. So we all have things that we're dealing with. Okay, and so what Christians are supposed to go around doing, Jesus says, if any man is to come after me, turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross and follow me. Now, that doesn't mean, I was telling the kids, that doesn't mean that you're supposed to build a cross and carry it every day, okay? That doesn't mean that. That means that when you are unselfish, then you are carrying other people's burdens. When you are unselfish, that, that means you're taking up your cross. You're taking, you're taking people's problems, okay? Now, still, still acting like you're carrying the burden, okay? Now, I'm taking some of his burden away, and I'm saying, okay, I'm going to carry your burden, okay? And I don't just stop there. I go, hey, I want to carry your burden. I want to carry your burden. I want to carry it. And, and then, then you, you carry it. You carry it every day. <laughs> you see, he, he has a burden right now that, that uh, he's, he's being separated from his drink. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. And so, so we carry each other's burdens, not just once, not just, it says daily. We carry each other's burdens. We're not, we're not living for ourselves. We're living for Jesus and we help other people. Let me tell you, not not every person here is called to be a minister, but every Christian is called to help other people. That's what taking up your cross is. It's being unselfish and carrying other people's burdens every day. Helping people. Helping people. Pastor Ray doesn't say, hey, uh, Janice, you know, today I'm going to take a day off from being a Christian. No, <laughs> no he, says, he says, I'm going to help you. Uh, you know, he's not perfect. You know, people that follow God, they're not perfect. But they're different. See, they're not perfect. People say, well, I'm not perfect. Well, I'm not either. I didn't think you were. <laughs> but, but, you're, but you're different. See, you're different because you're following Jesus. You want to be more like him. Isn't that right? Yes. Okay. Now, okay. Now, let me, let me take your bag from you. Thank you. Hang up. Okay. Now, I know you were suffering. I know. Okay. <laughs> Let's give CJ a hand clap. Let's give CJ a hand clap. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. So the... So the two things that I learned that I want to pass on to you, you can write them down if you want to, or whatever. Okay. <laughs> I know this isn't probably, y'all are probably taking notes with your food or anything, but th this, is, this is the two things I want you to remember. Number one, God is the only one that you can count on all the time. Okay. Uh, he will never leave or forsake you. It doesn't say that about anybody else. Okay. Uh, number two, Christians need to be a family. Not just co-workers <laughs> that say we're a family, okay? Those are the two things, all right? So, we'll see you later, <laughs> all right? Thanks. Thank you all for listening. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Miss Lori, you know, we have such we'll a dynamic place okay. uh, as we grow. At Grove, we're going to have two dynamic people. Amen? Amen. Listen, listen. God, God, God ushers people in here for plans and purposes. And, and, and the Lord, come on, because it's short. I'm about to see you. Praise the Lord. Hey, listen, listen. 
what, what Isaac said is so true, and it's just in the same flow of who we are as Life Impact Church. And I didn't talk to him today. We, I had nothing to do with this. It's just he just he just knows how to function in the Holy Ghost, Amen. And and that's what we do here is we we're, we're a preaching, teaching ministry. And what that means is that if you have a call in your life, I'm going to recognize that, and I want to give you opportunity to to perfect your 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 speech and your preaching in front of people. And that's what this is about. You know why? Because as we grow, one day you will go. And you will go out and preach and make disciples. And your successes will be mine. And my successes will be yours. Amen? And, and that is our theme is that we, we want to help each other prosper and grow. Amen? And, and a, a little child just came up to me just now and said, Pastor Ray, can I, can I get up there and share a testimony? And, and that excites me because the children are being taught right. They're being taught right back there. They're the ones who pick up our offerings all the time. We never even asked them. They just did it. It's been great. 